Uh, hi everyone uh, thank you for joining us in another episode of Zobin Talk here we always uh, invite special guests from HR and talent acquisition domain the experts uh, researchers who can add value by sharing their insights to our fellow HR and TA uh, teams and help the organizations to grow I'm here today with Abhishek David. He is a doctoral research student in Indian School of Business. He's a NUS alumni, HR thought leader, and HR transformation, OD and talent retention, uh, culture and change management, HR strategy, business dynamic partnerships, and so forth. He wears so many hats, but all comes back to HR and how to make the life easy for organizations to run their businesses. So over to you, Abhishek. Uh, Abhishek, uh, I welcome you and uh, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Zobin, for giving me this opportunity to present myself. I, I always say that I am a, I'm an educator. I'm a researcher, and and that tags will always be uh, be with me. I'm a academics, we call it. So mm-hmm. I come from practice, and then got into academics. So, so that's how uh, my my life journey uh, explains about. Um, I like to work on on individual behaviors. I like to work on the areas of HR. Um, and the the changes which has been happening externally in and around the business world and 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 how we as a human can drive those changes across uh, uh, i feel that hr is is a partner to business and and that's where uh, we can contribute hand in hand alongside with anything which comes as as a, as a supporting system in attaining business objectives so I, I find myself a business partner, uh, HR professional, uh, and and more close to business and achieving uh, the business objectives around. So that is that is what defines me. Uh, Sixteen years in HR, um, and and nowadays when I talk HR, I mean I I, I say business, business HR more than just HR, uh, and continuously working towards building integrated approaches around the HR practices. Um, a lot of my research focuses around future of work, so where the organizations are today and where they see themselves in in next four to five years uh, or maybe a longer, um, where are things uh, moving faster like AI and, and, and we see digitizations, uh, how the organizations are preparing themselves. Uh, when we say future of work, again, it is uh, by and large, the center of it is an individual an employee or a candidate and how the things are changing around him in terms of the ecosystem and how the organizations are preparing that whole ecosystem to better utilize the resource in the middle. And and that's what our research is all about of uh, HR and and sustainability, how the individual behaviors drive sustainable target or goals achievement. Um, we started calling it ESG and not just sustainability. Um, mm-hmm. How does the individual behaviors drive those sustainability goal achievements in the organization? Uh, also very close to me is, uh, is, is the belongingness concept, so how uh, uh, diversity, uh, equity, and inclusivity are driving belongingness amongst the employee. So the way I see belongingness is different than the way uh, the others will see, and and that's where the segregation it is, and that's how uh, a lot of DEI initiatives are failing because you know we think that one size fit all, and that's not a right approach to go about it because everyone's driver or everyone's drive to belong is different uh, to each other. And it all depends on our childhood experiences, our nature and nurture, um, also about our motivation to belong, our competence to belong. So there are multiple factors to it. So 
I'm I'm still decoding that that uh, that is work in progress. Okay, okay. Yeah, sounds great and you have explained a lot about what your studies are, what you are researching on. So as you are a, you know, researcher in the domain and can you share some successful case studies where AI has significantly improved HR functions? Traditionally when we give example of AI and automation, uh we always talk about uh IBM and I think uh they were the leaders when it comes to automation and and data utilization the data modeling concept and they started with watson as a tool which improved the engagement retention they actually monetized it they said that they had they were able to save some millions of dollars through that tool a lot of ai based recruitment models have been used currently and the most mm-hmm. easiest one have been used currently right now and in all the organizations i mean which i know here usually is around recruitment um including a lot of organizations have started to automate the whole candidate management system uh which is uh, which is the ta is uh, uh, the talent yes. acquisition is primarily uh, mostly taken care by by these ai tools um, uh, tools like zopa tools like tomo tools like others which are readily available in the market are quite uh, i mean by and large the services which has been provided by them um is 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 suffice and is uses the ai models to automate and that was the quickest one right i mean process perspective mm. recruitment is the quickest one to to automate and i think a lot of the organizations here which i see were able to automate the whole ta function through uh, bringing in uh, the ai based tools uh, in the in the in the use for hr okay so you also see in a market that uh, not only in india but in dubai market also you see organizations are adopting uh, you know ai related tools and they are like pretty happy with it right i mean they are getting adopted and smoothly they are going to more and more hi uh, ai approach isn't it so about when we talk about these tools adoption in 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 uae um like i'll i'll give one example and and then i think the things will be much more clearer so so the tools ai tools in the recruitment or in the field of ta has been there for a quite long time and i think since ibm started this 10 15 years back since then right mm. it's the similar situation which was there in the medical field wherein you mm. know we know that in the medical field all those 3d imaging and and the and the and True. the and the bots doing surgeries and all of that yes. was still there right mm. uh, however the doctors were still not using they were still not using it because of the lack of data which was not uh, which was not with them at that time so how if there is a lack of data Uh, the surgery cannot go right and hence the mm-hmm. surgery cannot go right they were only utilizing it to run some dummies and then do the actual surgeries by themselves so what has mm-hmm. happened over the course of time those machines got more and more data and mm-hmm. uh, uh and as those machines and these um these whole preventive care divisions have been getting more and more data of of patients uh I think the current age or the new age machines of medical uh, field are 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 much more advanced uh, because they have a lot of data and and the next fight in the AI arena uh, or in the AI arena is going to be around healthcare because mm-hmm. a lot of apple watches uh, yes. a lot of eye scans uh, mm. could bring in amount of data which can be used to bring AI changes to bring that same example back into hr mm. recruitment was told that the that the resume passing is biased that there yes. is there is there is all those biases in terms of race in terms of gender and all of that but with yeah. time uh, more and more data more and more lab- labels getting corrected around is making it uh, uh, much more useful so employee experience talent acquisition and workflows you know which is which can be automated through and a lot of listening engagement and all of that is getting automated i mean here and i'm i mean i see examples true. all across here yeah yeah that is true even in banking so many things have changed right earlier days uh, we used to go to banks and now everything is uh, 
in the touch of uh, your fingertips uh, you can do anything you want to right uh, you can do so yes, much so. with ai but yeah adoption is coming uh, nowadays people are more inclined towards it uh, is uh, right abhishek that is what even you are noticing right adoption of ai primarily right now is is we are still at a stage in in the ai era where in um, a lot of work is happening um, in terms of um, like existing data and how do i utilize that data to predict or to help and support uh, ai models are yet not been a decision maker in the whole process and and we are still to see that age but when that age comes uh, uh, I, I, and i think we we and our age is going to see that and and our our age in the workplaces will see those level of changes in the machine taking decision and only human aids to drive or say okay i was just reading um, some article across that the amount of uh, automations which is happening i mean when people talk about industry level like you know very hardcore industries like like power and others cannot be automated and and we see industry 4.0 coming through so how does mm. hr is going to support all of that so i mean we see we see a lot of augmentation of decision making happening and mm-hmm. and soon that augmentation is going to be automated in the near future so there will be a see change shift in the skill set required at the workforce level so um, uh, i i think that's the biggest challenge at this moment that how do i prepare for future skill set the skill set which nobody knows a lot of us are still decoding it so um, and if we know we only know some set of it and we are only preparing in those directions Mm. that's uh, that's a very interesting part which you have uh, told uh, in our uh, you know experience also what we have been seeing like with the ai you can go to a certain stage to hire the candidate but you know when it comes to picking up the right candidate with the help of extremely uh, you know uh, 100% uh, with ai then it becomes like tricky right people still like to get involved and do the screening process and so many things so uh, but to say add to your point that in current era there are things happening you know where you can employees uh, getting upskilled the learning and development departments are growing i mean these kind of uh, you know initiatives are getting taken up so that they are upgraded they know like you know how, where your employee currently stands and also for new hirings right it can apply to both of them yeah i'm just taking these two examples however by far and large the impact is all across mm-hmm. uh, when we when we right now i mean give you some examples of bots which is, so chatbots nlps and all of that which has been used basically to answer the question Correct. so so more of your hr operations and and the jobs which were more operational related wherein you answer a lot of questions to the to your internal customers as an employee um, a lot of sentiment analysis which has been used uh, acquisition use talent acquisition uses a lot of those predictive modeling and analytics in terms of comparing skill set comparing jd cv match all of that uh, and to also look at predictive analytics across retention so what are the retention drivers in the organization how do you use your lead data to convert that lead data into a predictive model and continuously run to measure the risk level of an individuals in the organization and accordingly proactively manage those risk clusters in the organization so so a lot of organizations are using those predictive retention models Um, uh, robotic process automation which has been used around to automate a lot of admin processes or uh, ai in terms of uh, gen ai where in a lot of content creation learning support yes. uh, supporting with the with the with the customized content for the staff in terms of their development uh, a lot of matrices around engagement which has been used so basically bridging the element of uh, psychology and ai which is emotions Uh, yes. also listening uh, platforms which is um, like like currently if you see um, uh, organizations like 
like Gallup and all, they also have an AI-backed mechanism to support our approach, including the emotional AI elements. So blockchain-wise, uh, uh, which is primarily your record management is more uh, your confidential data around HR can be managed uh, through that technology. Talent mm-hmm. marketplace has been very, very uh, up and running nowadays, supporting that how do you how do you bring the mobility of staff? So because as yes. we are going more and more from a job based approach to a skill based approach, uh, we we need to look at more mobility, uh, more flexibility of staffing, right? And as we yes. go more uh, digitized, more more AI driven, uh, skill set based uh, uh, staff movement, staff mobility. Also, where where do you need not a full time staff, rather uh, a part time or a gig workforce mm, freelancer? True. So those decision making is can be done uh, by any ta- talent marketplace and there's so many products available right now in that era. True. Exactly, exactly. And uh, what do you see like how organizations can balance the benefits of AI with the ethical considerations surrounding data privacy and bias? So, so when we say uh, when we say benefits, there are definite benefits of, of, of time value and, and you know we are able to do things faster we are able to uh, we are able to reduce uh, uh, reduce the stress on the actual uh, process perspective uh, uh, however when we see on the other side of it the ethical consideration um, which organizations can directly balance or can directly bring into is to is to bring a ethical framework across wherein every every organization who implement these ai tools should have respect. Uh, should have a guideline across. Should have a ethics committee uh, looking at it, which should not be the business division. Which should be completely different. Um, it should be very transferable and explainable. So any model, any communication, any tools which has been used or algos which has been used should be very transparent. Otherwise, you know you're you're basically inheriting biases. Before you get to implement that these should be checked uh, a data privacy measure should be there you know uh, nowadays complying with uh, with gdpr and with other regulatory guidelines is is very very important for anyone to operate in the digital and ai era um, m- continuous monitoring and evaluation because you know we are just saying right now that digital will be useful ai will be useful and everyone is very apprehensive about it because no one knows what is the outcome of of all of this is it going to really increase my business impact i mean studies from mckinsey's and deloitte's they say that there will be a there will be a multifold increase in the business outcome but no one has seen that outcome yet so uh, those are all predictions uh, so we are yet yeah. to evaluate we are yet to monitor the the benefits of those tools uh, which is getting implemented so that's where a caution is required uh, mm-hmm. that's where the more responsible ai technologies vendors fair selections across should be should be required to be done by the by the hr stakeholders there are some indirect uh, preparedness which organization can do internally uh, uh, is is primarily to train the people, create those literacy of AI, um, uh, bring in more uh, human touch or human oversight around uh, around any AI mechanism or tools which is implemented, acceptance of, of these new changes, because uh, these are changes which is going to impact a lot of functions, a lot of other departments across. And how do we take responsibility of that, accountability of that? How do we how do we bridge those feedback loops? Because there's going to be a lot of question, a lot of communication which is required across organizations. So that has to be looked at more internally. Also engaging with all the stakeholders because anything which gets implemented to advance uh, or to move the organization forward um, has to be has to be required with engaging all the relevant stakeholders and we cannot miss uh, anything and and that even includes our suppliers and 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 and, and staff and and customers because 
ultimately whatever we do with ex employee experience has to has to have an impact on your cx right yes absolutely this is very important to notice and uh, choose the vendors and the uh, panelists you know when you are going for vendor impanelment and also go through the gdpr compliances of the ai products we are going for that is really good because data privacy act we cannot let it go right it is very very important and it needs to uh, stay that way uh, what about uh, uh, what do you think about the uh, you know common misconceptions about uh, ai in hr people think you know we are going to lose job and uh, so many right uh, so what is your thought on yeah. that so the common misconception as you start saying we're going to lose job uh, this ai tool if we will take is going to fix all my problems or uh this is going to be implemented faster can have response time faster um a particular ai tool can make faster decisions uh also also to a certain extent we continuously say that uh when we bring in ai we are going to remove the biases uh, from the system right and or from the processes and uh these misconceptions are are by and large so so definitely the there is an evolve evolution in the hr job by itself when we talk about changes in the job in in talent acquisition now it is more strategic now it has become more and more uh, you know bringing that human touch around the whole system so so the job itself has been evolving and that's where i was saying the skill preparedness for tomorrow um not just for employees but also for hr is very very important so utilizing these these things in terms of bringing those human elements across utilizing ai tools uh, i mean it needs to be uh, ai professional hr professionals to look at ai as their aid in decision making uh, has to look at all of this as more augmentation and not the replacement so basically what i was doing before i will continue to do it right now but say i was doing a b c now my a and b will be done by machine but c will be done by me so so it is not a complete replacement but it's it's rather uh, the optimal utilization of these augment augmentation is required um there's a continuous need of training amongst the hr individuals that not just what i'm using right now but also what's available outside in the market and can help my help me do my job better i mean a uh, prompt engineering to to a basic of that is is something which is required to be learned by everybody um uh, i was i was in i was in one of the future talent council forums and uh, there was a master class on future talent council forum which talks about how how does the prompt engineering has been improving the organizations and i i was sitting with some of the bankers from china and other part of the world and they were talking about how they have been training their staff to do better prompt engineering to learn low code no code so i'm, I'm mm. talking about a, a a techno banker preparation who can automate a lot of their jobs by themselves if they know low code no code wherein they don't have to write anything and they can automate a small processes with just writing no code actually just bringing in some forms together uploading document and data analytics so uh, there are elements which can be done by anybody and it's it's just a matter of time that how we are preparing our workforces to that skill set so uh, again some customized solutions as well so not one size fit all uh, bring True. the bring the tools measure the changes across uh, look at how transparent they are look out how how are they in terms of the whole employee experience journey so that you know you're not creating something which is which is extremely difficult to manage with you know so simplicity is also one of the keys uh, when it comes to any tech or digital implementations a regular audit biases check is required as we as we move forward definitely uh, you spoke about also the data privacy and security is one of the key um, continuously encourage uh, to to gather feedback around that system or the implementation 
which will give us the potential to move forward with 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 enhancing that tool because all of these tools are are learning you know and and what they are learning is is whatever we will feed in if there is a garbage in we will not be able to get the right results out absolutely correct and i think uh, from organizations perspective as well as individual we should be having that uh, you know a curiosity to learn what is uh, in uh, what is out there what is trending and nowadays everybody uh, you know if we work as a as we were working 10 years back so it is not going to fetch any result either to us or to the organization right so organization has the uh, they are already taking the responsibility uh, with the help of uh, leaders like you but individual needs to also pay play a close attention to understand what is out there and yeah definitely ai is going to make their life easy make them more efficient rather than taking their jobs right i need to use the ai better to improve myself rather than yes. getting scared out of it no no i don't want to do it this is the process it will be much easy and so forth right so many misconceptions but good you have clarified a lot and i think uh, the hr ta's who are learning they will definitely learn a little bit from it so you tell me how it is going to be long a long term impact of ai in the organizational culture and employee well being because that is what we need to see right like it needs to be adopted it needs to be adjusted and everything mm. uh, everyone is happy employee is also happy and the organization is also happy so i i give it from two perspective i answer this question and uh, uh, from a, from a organization perspective as well as from so as well as from the employees perspective like like from a hr hat so So from a business hat perspective if i will give this example uh, um, we are already seeing change right so what we are talking about is uh, like i i always give this example and i would like to repeat is that you know uh, like few years back just two three years back we used to say there is a fintech there is a fintech and then there is banks there is no difference between a fintech and a bank you know that the the, yes. the the line is being blurred right now so fintech has to operate like a bank because they are also regulated by some authority and a bank also needs to be get digitized and automated and use of ai as a fintech has been doing right uh, so so the line is gone and and uh, what we are seeing is a larger industry level mergers and 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 combinations happening so when i say combinations i mean i'm i'm talking about two distinct industries as well merging right um, for an example there used to be uh, uh, there used to be cameras which was like highly efficient cameras who will take low light pictures and this and that and suddenly mm-hmm. all of the camera technology is now in our phone so build all the tech tech resources of 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 the of the better uh, of those of those industries to come into mobile phone industry right so i'm i'm just talking about how the whole uh uh sea uh, level change in the industry by and large is happening right so is is my long term perspective to bring in these changes and automate is going to mm-hmm. create more customer value or not first thing first and is able to cre- increase my market share uh, and well in turn is going to increase my profitability as well as my survival is important in the in the in the market so no one wants to become nokia because everyone wants so, to uh, move forward with the right amount of creativity and innovation coming through so that you maintain your market capital and the bottom line there uh, now yes. more from the organization hr hat perspective with this answer of of how the long term impact has been happening um, mm-hmm. is we can create a better employee experience across we can reduce the turnaround time or automations can reduce the turnaround time so so improving in 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 the whole uh, time taken to do the hr stuff is going to reduce uh, so definitely improving in the well being uh, work life balance uh, 
HR has always been sitting in a large scale of data, right? And how we will use the data to make better decision is what is going to be a biggest positive impact. And I think uh, when I talk about data, I always talk about that. We always look at attrition. Why don't we look at retention? Uh, yes. We always look at lag data. So we will look at attrition percentage and we will not look at retention percentage and retention factors so that we can look at data on a futuristic perspective. So, so HR looking at those lead data to make predictive decision and analytics is that is what I see uh, is going to be changing. Uh, I also see a lot of uh, biases and 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 the differentiation reducing. So I was, I, I I I mean like last few months. Last month was the Emirati uh, Women's Day, and in March there was International Women's Day, and mm-hmm. and we were just talking about it that how this whole diversity and we talk about gender diversity, uh, and and the whole line is getting blurred over the course of time. And we are slow. We are slow as an uh, as as. Uh, as to move forward with that, but it is happening and we are seeing that line getting blurred. And it's just a matter of time that that there will be equal representation across. And sometimes it is reinforced by the government agency to expedite it. But um, if I have to say in next five to 10 years down the line, I mean, we see gender diversity being there. We see, we see if it is not there as an organization, you will be questioned. So it's going to become a bare minimum, right? There could be potential challenges as well, um, like our over-reliance on technology. But as I say that, I always say that uh, a tech, a high tech could be taken with high touch uh, um, element, wherein it is required that where it is touching my stakeholders, customers, employees, or or other stakeholders across. Uh, there will always be privacy concern because we are dealing with a large amount of data. And it was always there, trust me. I mean, previously it was not uh, so uh, so loudly uh, talked about, but now it has been talked about much more. Uh, biases being fair uh, is, is something which will always be there. And, uh, we need to we need to reduce those elements and and again as I say with time these things will automatically uh, gonna be taken care of a mm-hmm. lot of reskilling a lot of learning opportunity so so people like me who uh, who who do a lot of leadership development talent development and all that role we're gonna, we're gonna stay we're gonna stay in the industry absolutely because we we're gonna shine the org- we're gonna pair organizations for future. Um, we will become more human centric and, and, and we have to become more human centric. However, how much ever we are going to bring those machines or, or those algorithms to, to take our tools in, but, uh, continuously evolving and learning is what human evolution is all about. So hopefully we will be, we will be prepared as we were prepared for, a for, a uh, in, in very, uh, in, in, in 1780s, we prepared ourselves for computers. Then we prepared ourselves for internet. Then we prepared ourselves for mobiles. We will prepare ourselves for uh, AI and digital transformation as well. Absolutely, uh, we will. And when leaders like you are there uh, to help the organizations learn the value of it, and you know, make them adopt, uh, make them adjust, and also keeping in mind employee engagement perspective, how they are like, how to bring the change, right? So it will definitely going to help everyone. So thank you so much, Abhishek, for your uh, great insights. And I am sure our audience have learned a lot. And I also would like to, uh, you know, uh, tell them if they want to have uh, any more, uh, if they want to ask any more questions, they should uh, write to us and, uh, you know, we will uh, get back to you and we will need more insights from you and, you know, answer them. So I really uh, wish you all the best for your research work. You grow and grow. And along with uh, you, the organization grew as well. Thank you so much, Abhishek. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zobin team. Thank you, Manjeet.